The Lord gave me this, the, the title of this message, interestingly enough, Tuesday morning about 4.30 in the morning, he wakes me up and, and we have a little conversation, a lot of mornings, and, and it's very unusual for him to give me a, a message that early in the week. I usually don't know what it is till Friday or so, but uh, he gave me this and he, he said it's about forgiveness, and I thought, well, okay. We've talked about forgiveness. Oh, I know I need to, to forgive anyone. Uh, judge not lest you be judged. And that if we don't forgive each other from our hearts, then our Father in heaven will not forgive us either. And things like that, right? But he said, no, it's different than that. It's about God's forgiveness for us. Isn't that something? It is making it personal to us. He forgives us. And it's not predicated on what we do. Amen? That's the beauty of it. And far too often we try and make it into something that it's not. But God Almighty wants to forgive us and He has forgiven us. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, He has forgiven you. And we need to get that in our spirit. Sometimes as believers, we tend to lose sight of that. And we cannot lose sight of it. Because we will lose our victory in Jesus like we just say. We will lose that victory. Because we start thinking that it's all about what I do or what I haven't done or anything else like that. But God Almighty provides the way for our forgiveness. And it started way back in the Old Testament. And we want to look at it here. Exodus 12, 13. We've seen this before, right? I think you've read this once or twice. You heard of this one before? So, but the blood on your doorpost will serve as a sign. If you have Jesus in your heart, you've asked him to forgive you for your sins, he has put his blood on your doorpost. We are living in this house we call a body. Amen. And we, he has put his blood on our doorposts. And on, on our body, look at that. It would be here and down here and here and here. Interesting, isn't it? Ah. Wow, you know what I learned that? About three or four seconds ago when he just showed me that. I don't know all this stuff. Isn't that amazing though? He puts it here and here and here on these houses that we live in. There they would take and kill that lamb. And they would be inside the house eating the lamb. They would have to take the lamb that God had chosen into them. And we need to take the lamb of God. And he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens the door, I will come into him and <coughs> sup with him. And they came, they came. Symbolically, they would eat that lamb and bring him into them. And, oh, Lord Jesus, you come into us. When, when we say, Lord Jesus, here I am. Op I'm opening my heart up to you. Come into me. So the doorpost will serve as a sign. Isn't that interesting? As a sign. I thought, hmm, when do they put all this stuff in here, right? I don't know when. They must have put that in like last week because I've never seen that before, right? It's a sign. We got a new sign out front, right? Amen. Everyone like it? I love yes. it myself. I think it looks amazing. You ought to see it at night when it's lit up and it really lights up and we should be signs lit up, amen, for God amen. Almighty. But it's a sign. And guess what? Who's the sign for? Let's look and see. Marking the houses where you're staying, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. It's a sign to God. It's not a sign for us or not a sign for anything, but it's a sign to God. He's the one that's on the outside of the house looking in. It's a sign. We have a full <coughs> sign over us. So we're covered in Jesus' blood. Yes, amen. We're covered. We have a sign over the top of us, amen. It's plastered on your head. Amen. Isn't that amazing? When they talk about the mark of the, the beast, gonna, they just want to put the sign on here or on your hand. Just like the blood, right? Ooh. I don't want him to put their, their mark on I want his mark on me. Amen. I want that blood here and here and here. Amen. He puts us there. We have a sign printed on us. But in the houses where you're staying, we're staying in this house right now. We're staying in this house. But when he sees the blood, it's not about what the people did inside. Amazingly enough, 
Did those people all of a sudden start living a pure and holy life? No. Nod your head like this. <laughs> no. Did they change at all? No. Did anything happen? No. Nothing happened except the blood was applied to the house. Nothing happened to those people other than the blood was applied to the house. And far too often we want to get it all about me again. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about his blood that's applied to the house that we live in. Amen. Amen. Isn't that, that's good news. I'm here to tell you. And he says, the rest of the verse says, and this plague of death will not touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. Praise you, Jesus. Wow. We're talking about how prayer in school has gone out the window and how everything else, we're kicking God out of anything and everything. And God will judge the land, unfortunately. Uh, but he's righteous God, so it's got to be the right thing. I say, unfortunately, he's going to judge the land. It's going to be unfortunate for the people that don't know him. Amen. But for us, it will not strike us. The death, the plague of death will not strike us if we have that blood on the lintel and the doorposts of the house that we live in. Amen. He's coming. He's coming. Look at this. Our sins are forgiven not because... God overlooks what we've done, but because he sees the blood of the Lamb. Amen. He overlooks it. He overlooks it. Guess what? We think we get all this holy. Oh my goodness, I'm doing this and I'm doing that and I'm doing... And that's why God loves me. Nothing at all to do with what you do or you don't do. Nothing at all to do with it. It's because of the blood of the Lamb. He's covered us. He's anointed us. My goodness, Lord God. Look at this, though. The first aspect of the blood is toward God. It's the vertical part of the cross. Right? It's Godward. It's towards Him. It goes to Him first. He's the one that sees it. And then as we reach out, He says for us to love one another, right? It's reaching out to our brothers and our sisters. But first, the longest part of that cross is reaching up towards him. And the cross, interestingly enough, when it was when they would hang someone on it, they would drop, they would dig a hole in it and drop it in the ground. Right? It was solidified. The feet were down basically on the ground and holding up towards him. It's solidified by our grounding on the rock. That had to, they dig, had to dig down and hit that bedrock. And there we are. Praise God. Lifting up to him. And then as we forgive our others as, as he has forgiven us. All of a sudden it's reaching out to us on both sides. We need to reach out as well. He reached out to us. Right? He reached out to us. And now we can reach out to others. And love one another just like he said to do. Our God is such an amazing God. It's, it never ceases to amaze me. Now look at this. On the day of atonement, the high priest took the blood of the, into the Holy of Holies and sprinkled it where only God could see it. Now imagine this. Remember they would take the, the lamb when they were in the wilderness or even when they came into the temple and they would kill that lamb out in the open courtyard into the outer court where everyone was, right? They would kill that lamb there and then they would put the lamb, the body of that lamb on the altar and sacrifice it, put it up there. But the, the blood was caught and brought by the, the high priest into the Holy of Holies, into the very back. And only God and the high priest could see us. He sprinkled the blood of Jesus, the blood of the lamb on the, whole, on the mercy seat. Amen? Had nothing to do. No one else. It wasn't for anyone else to see. It wasn't for you to see. It was for God. It was strictly between the high priest. Now, who was our high priest? Jesus. Jesus is our high priest now. Jesus took his own blood when he made the real sacrifice and brought it right into the Holy of Holies and sprinkled it on the mercy seat. And God is satisfied with that. The blood of Jesus satisfies the Father. Not <laughs> anything that we have done or we have failed to do. Boy, my goodness, we get so into this. Oh, I didn't do this and I didn't do that and, and everything else. 
But the blood satisfies God and it must satisfy us as well. If we go by our feelings, we get nothing out of it. We get absolutely nothing. Well, I don't feel like I'm saved today. I don't feel like, well, I've done this and I haven't done that and I hadn't been reading my Bible enough and I hadn't done this enough and, I, and I'm done. What is the common word there? I, I yeah. haven't done that and I have done this. I, I've been really good today. So I feel like I can come for the Lord. Yeah. Oh, Makes no difference. No difference whatsoever. It's whether or not the blood is on the door posts and right. the lintel. On the lintel. <coughs> up here, where our mind is, our soul is, our mind, our will, and our emotions. I need that on my mind so much. Lord God. Because our mind is wicked. I mean, it is something terrible. But look at this. 1 Peter 1.18 says, For as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things, I'm corruptible. I am corruptible. I can't be saved by what I do or what I don't do. Amen? Such as silver and gold, I can't buy my way into it. I can't buy my way. Well, I tithe. I gave my tithe this week, and, and uh, so then I, I, I can pray. But, oh, man, I couldn't do it this week because, you know, the rent was due and everything else. So I, I, I can't pray this week. Oh, mercy. You see where we go with this? Oh. But do we do that? Oh. We do that, don't you? Nod your head like this because I know you do because I do it. <laughs> we all do it. It's all in our head <coughs> about whether it's, it's something that I have done or I haven't done. Mm -hmm. This is a liberating thing. This is freedom to us if we get this in our head. You know, we're always praying for this and for that, and Lord, do this and Lord, do that, and, and we always wonder how he's, he's answering, right? <coughs> and we've always heard the thing, you know, it's either yes, no, or wait, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, no, or wait. Well, his answer is always going to be fulfilled in a way that he's going to reveal Jesus to us more. Every answer that we ask for is a little bit more knowledge of him. We have just a speck of understanding of what Jesus has done for us. And we continue to lose that ground, don't we? We tend to nod your head like this again. We tend to lose that ground. We keep, oh my goodness, I didn't do, oh, I can't come before him. Oh, he's, he's mad at me. And he's, no, no. The people in those houses hadn't changed a bit. They were just doing what the word said. They put the blood on the lintel on the doorposts. It's not with corruptible things. It's not, I can't buy my way there. Uh, from the vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. Our flesh is just like it was back then. We're always thinking our conversation. Interesting way he puts it there. Conversation. It's in the, the old King James. <clears throat> we run this little conversation through our head. Right? I hadn't done this and I did do that. And oh my goodness. Vain conversation. Received by tradition from your parents or your fathers. We all think the same way. Yeah. We all do the same thing. Everyone does it. Mm -hmm. Has nothing to do with it. We're not redeemed by through this corruptible stuff. We can't buy our way there. It's not got anything to do with our little conversation we have in our own heads. And everybody does it. But with the precious blood of Christ. Yeah. Uh, as of a lamb without blemish or without spot. He is without the blemish or spot. I am with much blemish and much spot. It has nothing to do with me. It has to do with the one that is pure and holy. Amen. It's all about what he has done. It's all about his blood that he sacrificed. What's interesting is, is Jesus said, this is my body. Uh, and you shall eat my body. If you do not eat my body and drink my blood, you have no business with me, right? You have no right to be called mine whatsoever. <clears throat> they were eating the body, 
of the lamb, right? Mm -hmm. And now he's saying, take that blood into you as well. Take that blood. Cover me and wash me and cleanse me, Lord God. Cover me and wash me and cleanse me, Lord. <clears throat> I have no right to come before a holy God. But you make me that way. All of a sudden, now, what was once not worthy because it was the blood of an animal, now we have his pure blood that we can drink. And it satisfies. <clears throat> Look at Hebrews 10, 22. So let, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. We can come near before God Almighty with a pure heart, a true heart, it says here, <clears throat> in full assurance, in faith. I can come before God Almighty. I've told you so many times that when I first came before the Lord, I knew I had no business coming before a holy God. And I didn't. I had no business because I had not been covered under His blood. But, <clears throat> but now I can come with full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. We've been sprinkled with his blood and our evil conscience that keeps telling us all this stuff, all these little things that keep going on in our brain and our bodies washed with pure water. Hmm. Wait a minute. Sprinkled from an evil conscience, but our bodies are washed in pure water. What is in pure water? The word, the word, they eat the body, right? They eat the body of the lamb. Mm -hmm. Who is the word? Jesus. Word was with God. Word was, was God. He came and dwelt among us. Right. We need to be in his word. We need to be here listening to his word. <clears throat> See, <clears throat> again, we're only getting just such a tiny little piece of what Jesus is. We need to continually eat it. We need to continually take it to us. And it will start showing us more and more and more. And it's only showing us more of Him. Over and over again, it is only showing us more of Him. But I need that washing of the water of the Word. Amen? I need that. Because all this other stuff gets stuck on me. This world gets stuck all over me. Wash me in your word, Lord God. What do I need to overcome it? How did Jesus overcome all the temptations that the enemy sent at him? With the word. Over and over again. Wash me in your word, Lord God. Show me. Teach me your ways, Lord God. I need to have him in my life. Jeremiah 17, 9 says... The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Our heart will deceive us in a heartbeat. <laughs> it will deceive us so quick. But we have to put our faith in what he has done and not in what we have done. God does not cleanse our heart from sin. He has to give us a new one because the old one is so wretched. It can't be done. It can't be renewed. It needs to have a whole new heart. He goes on to tell us. If I get my place back. In Ezekiel 36, 26. This is a new heart will I give you. A new spirit I will put within you. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and will give you a heart of flesh. Our hearts get so hard. My heart was a stone when I first came to him. I was blocking him out so much. I didn't want to hear anything about it. Didn't want anything to do with him. Didn't want anything to do with what he's got. My heart was hard against him. And we need to be careful that we don't allow our heart to become hardened again. That we don't allow, that we do allow the word of God to come in Amen. and change that. Yeah. If we get saved, and we've seen so many people over our lives that come and get saved, walk down the aisle, and then they leave and never come back to another church, never open their Bible again, 
And what happens is that their heart tends to continually get harder and harder and harder. But he says, I'll give you a new heart. New heart will I give you, and a new spirit. That's when our spirit is born again, amen? I need my spirit born again. Uh, come and wash me and make me anew, Lord God, right? I need him to give a new spirit in me. And our spirit is born. That's what is done when we come become born again. Our spirit is born. We never, ever approach God on the basis of our good works. Well, I've done, I, I've been extra good today. I've I, I read my Bible a, a whole hour or, or, or a good ten minutes today. I just, I, I, I've been really good or, or or I haven't been really good today. I, I've been terrible. I can't go before the Lord God and I, I can't do that. But we do that, don't we? I've, I've spoken to so many people, so many people, and I know Brother Bill has too. Well, I, you know, why don't you come to church, brother? We, you know, I'll call you up for some counseling. Brother, this is going on, that's going on. And you counsel them, you talk with them and say, brother, you need to be in the, the body of Christ. You need to be hearing the word of God. Well, I've just been doing so much stuff, brother. I don't feel like I'm worthy of coming in. Guess what? I'm not either. I'm not either. I'm not worthy to come in. But I got to come in because of his blood. It's not about what I've done. It breaks my heart to hear someone that needs it so much. That's when we really need to be in. We need to be washed by the water of the word. His blood hasn't changed. It's still there. Same blood, still on me. It's not about whether I've been extra good or extra bad or anything in between. It's all about Him. Amen? Whether I have a good day or a bad day. If I've consciously sinned or not. Ooh, wait a minute. Whether I've consciously sinned or not, I still come to Him the same way. Amen. I still come to Him the same way. Because what... Believe it or not, if you haven't consciously done something, you've subconsciously done it anyway. Because we turn our back so often, we give our credit for things, the, the, the things that we've done or not done. Well, I hadn't killed anyone, right? Oh, with your tongue, you probably have. <laughs> you know? That's a hard one for us to get over. It really is a hard one for us to get over. The Lord showed me this back in about 76 or 77, uh, or 87, I'm sorry, 87. I was overcoming uh, a, a bad sin that had overcome me, running through my mind constantly. And the Lord revealed it to me and opened my eyes, and I went, oh, hey, that's not good. I should be doing that. And I stood before him and I said, Lord, I've got, to, I, I, where else can I go? You have the words of life. And that's when he gave me 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Right? Lord, I did it. I'm the one that did it. I sinned. I sinned. That's a hard one for us to come to grips with, first of all. I sinned. I did it. It wasn't what anyone else did. It wasn't what anything, or the enemy did this or anything else. Yeah, the enemy does all kinds of stuff, and people will do all kinds of stuff. But if I sinned, I sinned. Nothing to do with what anyone else did. I sinned. I did it. But then I would go back, and I would still slip up again. Guess what? You still slip up again, right? You can't get through a day without some some type of sin going on in your life because we live in this body and we live in this world that wants to do its own thing. But I tell you what, I would have to come before him again and say, oh Lord, I did it again. I did it again, Lord. Forgive me. And at first, I would go through this period of time, this grievance period or, or penance period. Anyone used to be a Catholic, you understood this, right? Doing your penance. Well, if I say 10 Hail Marys and 
for our fathers and all, all this other stuff. If I do this and I do that, nothing to do with me. I had to come to the point, he had to prove to me that as soon as I say I did it, I'm forgiven and it is over. Amen. It's over, it's forgotten, it's done with. He removes it as far as the east is from the west. Right? Not north and south, because if you go to the North Pole, you start down the other side, it's going south then, right? You can keep going round and round and round on this old earth, east, west, east, west, still. If you stop, that's still west, that's still east, doesn't matter, right? He does not remember our sins. He does not remember even that we had sinned. It's over with. It's under the blood. It's not under the because I've done something. And once I realize that, I don't have to stop and do my little penance. I, I, it's going to take me a week. He, this one's a bad one, oh Lord. I know this is a bad one. He, he won't forgive me for a good week until I beat myself up long enough. You've done it. I've done it anyway. If you hadn't, I've done enough for all of you. I mean, it's true. I've done it. And you probably have to. I hope you have. Anyway, that you recognize your sin enough to where you go on. Well, this is a bad one. You know, if we're not conscious of our own sinful nature, we got no no hope. What can we do? I need to realize that I am unholy, and He is holy, and I need that blood on me. And there is no other way to get there. This world teaches us. That, well, you know, if you do so much good and then so much bad, and hopefully at the end it'll all weigh out at the end. My good stuff will outweigh the bad. Isn't that the way the world thinks? And our flesh wants to think the same thing. It wants to think the same thing. I've done so much good, and, and oh, we'll pray over the world. We'll pray over so many different people that's died, and they'll go, well, he, he did all this good stuff. And he, Do you hear what we're saying there? Does that strike you that he did these good things and those bad things and, and, and I, I, God's got to just let him into heaven? You know, we, we've been going through on Wednesday nights reading through all these different books about witnessing to people. And one of the best questions you can ask someone, uh, if you were to die today, would you go to heaven? And if so, why would God let you in? And... Just about 100% of the time, if they don't know the Lord, well, I've done all these good things and I've tried to outweigh the bad things. It's the way our minds think. It's the way our carnal nature is. And that carnal nature will creep up on you and cause you to lose your victory in Jesus. It has nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with her whether I messed up or not. See, it's whether or not I realize I messed up. 99.99999% mm. <laughs> of the time, we don't even realize we messed up. We don't realize we missed the mark. As soon as we've had a bad thought about someone or anything, all of a sudden, whether I realize it or not, I've sinned. I've broken his law. I'm not perfect. And Jesus said, be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. I'm not perfect. So then I'm automatically a loser. Right? How about Paul? Paul, the Apostle Paul. Seems like he believed the Lord. I, I, I'm just going to say, I think he was a believer. And yet he says, the things that I want to do, those are the things I don't do. And the things that I don't want to do, that's the thing I do. And what does he say? Oh, what wretched man I am. Who will save me? Oh, man. Jesus. Lord Jesus is the one. Paul realized that he wasn't perfect. He realized. He, see, the closer you get to the Lord, the more you'll realize how much you do mess up. And that's a good thing. It's a good thing. If we can realize he is holy and yet he still lets me in. I don't have to do my penance. As soon as I start seeing this sin and that sin and this thing that's going wrong, it's take this away, Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. I don't want this. We're going to go into a whole lot more next week 
on this part of it. And it's going to be awesome. It really is. It's, it is an awesome, awesome lesson. But I, it's not about me. It's not about what I do or what I don't. I still come to him the same way. Whether I've had a good day, oh, I prayed all day and I've done this and now I, I've read the Bible and I, I've even prayed over sister so-and-so and I, boy, God is so happy with me, now I can go and ask him anything. Yeah. Has, but we do that. Yeah. Has absolutely nothing to do with it. Thank you, Jesus. Boy, I hadn't prayed in a week and I hadn't, hadn't opened my Bible and and I got mad at my kid, and I kicked the dog and everything else, you know. <laughs> you know? So I can't eat each. i got to do my penance for a while. For I came to the Father by the blood of Jesus, and I'll continue that relationship the same way I got there. I can't get there anyway. I can't continue the relationship. Uh, for some reason, we realize we came to him by the blood, but we forget that we got to stay there the same way. It's going to be the same thing that keeps us there. has nothing to do with me whatsoever. I like that. I, can, I have to continue the relationship strictly by his blood. He knows you. Guess what? He knows what you've done. When we don't know what we've done. He still loves us. He still gives us that blood. And when he looks at us, he sees that big neon sign. Blood of Jesus. <laughs> covered over this house. We live in a house that is corruptible. God's acceptance of the blood <clears throat> is the ground upon which we may enter and there is none other. There is no other way to enter Amen. before the kingdom of God. Before Amen. the holy God. There is no other way. There is no other way not to come into his presence. There is nothing about it. Hebrews 10, 19 puts it this way. Having therefore brethren, 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 and sister, all y'all, boldness to enter in the holy of holies. Oh, by what? By the blood of Jesus. Not by anything that I didn't do. Not by anything that I did. I did this and I feel bad and I has nothing to do with it. We only come there, brothers and sisters. We come there through his blood. Look at what Jesus says. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. I heard that from his own lips the first time I ever heard it. <laughs> when he brought me to the Father. And what was I? A drug dealer. Breaking into people's houses. Praying upon women. What did he do? Brought me to the Father. And I knew... I had no business coming before the Father. But the Father immediately, I'll take him. And my thought immediately was, what? Do you know me? I'm the scum of the earth and you didn't even blink? You didn't think about it? Have I changed? Yes, yeah, some of the outward things have changed. But this old heart that is still deceitfully wicked, who can know it? I need your new heart. I need your new heart. And that word came. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by Him, by Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Man, our God loves us. I'm going to leave that one up there for that. We, we as believers need to get this. In our Spirit in our mind, in our soul, our mind, will, and emotions is where the problem lies, right? When you've messed up, you can still come before the Father. Say, oh Lord, Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, take this out of my heart. I need deliverance, and I can't wait to give this next message next week. I need deliverance from me. <laughs> I need deliverance from me. Let's hear it. Let's hear it, Dean. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, girl. Thank you, Jesus. 